My name is Ihor Veris. I'm 29 years old. I'm originally from Ukraine, but uh, I've been living and training in Canada for the last eight plus years. Uh, my uh, backyard record is 67 yards. That was quite an accident. Uh, my girlfriend basically convinced me to sign up for this local uh, backyard race, which, which turned out to be a silver ticket race for nationals. And I guess the rest is history because I wasn't sure if I would be even good at this format. I, I did love the conventional ultras. But she said, hey, give it a try. It's nearby and see what's going to happen. And here we are. The backyard is uh, it's even hard to call it a running format or it's more like an endurance challenge. Uh, but uh, it has a lot of uh, interesting perks. Well, one of my favorite parts of backyard is the social one where you get to chat with people you would usually never chat, right? Because conventional ultras are usually you're spread out across the field and very often you end up being alone. Whereas in backyard, it's not a case. Uh, you see those people every single hour and you get to know them very well. Um, very, very well. It's, at a certain point, you start hating them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you definitely bond with those people and you build those strong bonds and you become good friends. And I'm still great friends with the, uh, many of those uh, runners I, I did backyard. Uh, so social part is probably one of my favorites, but of course the unknown part where the curiosity is kicking in, uh, I am very curious what our bodies are capable of and uh, what we as uh, human beings can push ourselves. I think we don't know a lot about our physical abilities and probably we don't even know more about our mental abilities. So. It's very interesting to see, uh, for me, um, how far we can go, how far we can push. And this format presents that opportunity. Just like Lass says, uh, it's easy until it's not, right? 6.7K doesn't seem like a long stretch for an hour. And everyone can do it, right? But at some point, it gets harder and harder. And I think the hardest part for me is managing those um, injuries, making sure that they're not flaring up. And if you have some hot spots, you deal with them right away. And thankfully, we see aid station every hour we can do so. I don't find the sleep deprivation um, <clears throat> a very challenging part. I mean, it is hard for sure, but I, I find I'm capable of pushing through. Again, granted, I've I've never done, I've done 67 hours. So I've never gone through the fourth night, for instance. So We'll see. I, I don't know if we'll see, but I'm curious to know if, if it's uh, how, how it's how my body would deal with that. Um, but, yeah, I think dealing with those injuries, hot spots uh, is, is the most challenging part for, for me, for sure. I don't do anything in particular for backyard. Uh, I live in the mountains area in British Columbia, um, Canada. And uh, I run hills, run mountains every single day. So I do have a lot of vertical training, where, which I hope will be helpful on Laz's course, where there's a lot of elevation gain and lots of hills on a day course in particular. Uh, so, yeah, I don't do anything specific for backyard, to be honest. I don't. I do uh, some speed walk sessions for sure, but uh, just once a week. But most of the time, it's just regular training, the one you would do for any conventional ultra. When we did the backyard last year in Canada, we didn't really know how fast or how slow to do it, what breaks to take. So I think we actually borrowed the Harvey Lou strategy because uh, at that point, he, he was the uh, world record holder. Uh, so we, we are sticking kind of to the same pace of 53, 55 ish minutes per, uh, loop for the day loop. And again, it all depends on the course, right? Uh, I heard the last course is, uh, exceptionally hard, but if I look at the elevation profile, it seems like it's the same that we had here in Canada, uh, national. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, keep it consistent, especially day loops, trying to hit those, 53, 55 minute uh, loops, uh, do them 
relatively slow, I guess, and not planning on taking a lot of uh, break time day loops, but night loops, we might change it. Again, depending on the course, seems like it's going to be a little bit flatter. So we'll probably pick up pace and uh, hopefully book a bit more time for, for naps at night. Because this is going to be my third backyard. So I did silver ticket race. And when I realized that I was at national championship um, with Team Canada at that point, I think when there was there were probably three of us left, um, I realized that, okay, I can do it. I think uh, we can we can go to worlds, we can go to individual championships. And I had in my head and the, yeah, I guess uh, I, I I was able to uh, run the most loops uh, here in Canada and it basically secured the sport, the spot in, at individuals and bigs. Uh, so now I'm, even though in Canada I have the most loops, but I'm not even making top 20 at bigs uh if you rank us which is really cool i i really love to see that and um, i i'm curious and excited to meet up and run with all their uh, pros and those behemoths of this sport with people who ran way more than me and hopefully pick up their brain and learn new from them and uh, make friends with them i'm really excited i'm 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 really excited i'm looking forward to it we just um chatted with my uh, uh, crew member Marina and uh, she's she got a little bit nervous and she was like hey let's 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 start planning what exactly you want uh, but I said hey you know what let's just treat it as just our local race you know I know it's it's world's championship but let's just keep it simple and treat it just like our another backyard here in in, in British Columbia and because we want to go out there and we want to have fun you know, and uh, we want to have a great time. We don't want to stress out. We don't want uh, our nerves to kind of ruin our physical position. And uh, we are hoping just to go there, enjoy it, meet last, meet all their amazing runners, meet you guys there and um, have a great time and hopefully make great memories. This competition, I, I also call it a stubbornness competition. Uh, me probably being a uh, having a Ukrainian background, I'm very stubborn. So when it comes to uh, uh, pushing yourself to the limits and uh, going through the pain and uh, going to the very, very last moment. So I know that I'm not going to drop out un unless this is something unbearable. You know, this is something that uh, my human body just, you know, can't uh, Barry anymore again i haven't dropped out yet but uh given the field here and uh, the capacity of uh, some of the runners i know it could happen so uh, i think that stubbornness part that i have in me has been very helpful and um, uh, i think that's the the, the feature or maybe trait that i have that uh, uh, helped me uh, to thrive in this format uh, so far <laughs> I listened to last podcast, I think from February, and he said that um, uh, we're going to go 100 plus. I th do not think so. I personally think the course record will fall, but the world record will not. So I think the course record is 85 by Harvey Lewis. Uh, but uh, yeah, the world record is 102. But due to the um, uh, first of all course, it's very technical, lots of vert, it's harder nights are going to be long um also people are traveling from all over the place so they're not going to be at home right so it's going to be time lag and all those things coupled together i i think we're going to go into 90s uh i do believe that 90s is going to is going to happen at bigs 100 plus i don't think so i don't think this course is really good for breaking the world record so that's that's my prediction anyway. So I think maybe 97, 98-ish, um, that's where I think it's going to end.